I was a late reader, but once I could read, I sank deeply into the world of Junie B. Jones. I even tried reading Goosebumps books a couple of times, but always returned them early to the library. My first favorite book ever was The Tale of Despero, and I wore it like a medal. I felt so cool for finally knowing the answer to the hardest question an avid reader has. But like many people, I slowly started to dislike reading in junior high and high school. Reading became homework, so I equated it to punishment. For the longest time, I still told people that The Tale of Despero was my favorite book because it was the last thing that I read on my own for enjoyment. I read here and there, but I could never quite finish a book or find something to sink my teeth into. Fast forward to 2023, the year I renewed my bookworm status. Hayao Miyazaki announced that his latest film, what we now know as The Boy and the Heron, was inspired by one of his favorite books, and that book was How Do You Live? written by Genzaburo Yoshino. I had to read it. I knew that anything Hayao Miyazaki found inspirational was worth reading, so I purchased it ASAP. This book is simple and taught me the valuable lessons that I thought I already knew. It also made me realize my love for slice-of-life narrative. It was the first time I had read something so simple and peaceful that wasn't boring, but instead atmospheric and easy to slip into. The story follows Junichi, who is nicknamed Copper. He lost his father and his uncle steps up and tries to be a father figure for him. His uncle writes a journal for him where he writes down important life lessons that he wants Copper to carry with him. This leads to the narrative being split between Copper as he lives his daily life and his uncle as he writes pages and pages into the notebook for Copper. I really loved having alternating perspectives. It made the story interesting and the chapters where Copper's uncle journaled allowed for a deeper look into his philosophy and the important questions we all have about life and how to best live life. This was a perfect 10 out of 10. Also on my list for best reads of 2023 is the series Heaven Officials Blessing. This is an eight book series and it definitely deserves to be on this list. To briefly sum it up, this story follows Xiedian, a god that has been banished multiple times and despite that manages to ascend once more. To bring up his reputation, he is tasked with resolving mysterious happenings in the worldly realm. As he untangles the truth about what is behind those troubling incidents, he crosses paths with a mystifying and alluring entity who he can't get off of his mind. In short, they team up together and uncover a plethora of secrets about the heavenly realm, all the while deepening their relationship, but just what is their relationship to one another. This was an immersive read planted in a world full of lore, mythology, and secrecy. I loved this series, and I give it a 10 out of 10. Next on the list is Stay True by Hua Su. This is a memoir that pours over Hwasu's college years, it has a diary feel to it with many moments that feel like poetry. I was mesmerized by his ability to write in an almost collage-like style while retaining clarity. He talks about his past angst, the bands he liked before everyone else, the zines he made, and the friends who made up his world at the time. One of them being Ken, the kind of person he never thought he'd be friends with. He shares moments of their friendship and how Ken changed his philosophy on friendship. His friend Ken passes away tragically and Hua Su retells his grief and sadness, and how he turned to writing to heal. This memoir is hard to pin down. It's not about one thing specifically, it's more of a collage, like a zine. It's about loss, friendship, healing, being a child of immigrants, identity, and staying true to yourself. This book really changed me, and it'll stick with me forever, so this was a 10 out of 10. I read many other books, but they didn't make it on the list. Instead, I have many manga titles to go through, so I'll keep my wrap-up brief for each one. 2023 was the year I started reading manga wholeheartedly, so there's going to be a lot of classics that you already know and love on this list. Should I just hold this for this segment? I'm not gonna hold this. This is too much. Full Metal Alchemist by Hiromu Arakawa. This was the first series that I really got into. I remember there were days I'd wake up at 5 a.m. just so I could squeeze in another volume or two before work. Now, every time I think of this series, I think of those fond memories. The story follows two brothers who lose their mom at a young age and vow to bring her back using 
alchemy, which is strictly prohibited. In secret, they make their attempt to bring her back, but they fail and pay the price with their bodies. Now they are on a mission to restore their bodies to their original state using the Philosopher's Stone. The story really expands from that point in ways that I didn't anticipate. The world of Full Metal Alchemist feels vast, and the lore runs deep. This series has a perfect rhythm of action, humor, and drama. I give this a 10 out of 10. Hyrath, The End of the Journey by Yuki Kamatani. This is the only short manga series on my list, complete at three volumes. Despite it being a short series, it was able to leave a deep mark on me. Before I get into this series, it's important to be aware of the trigger warnings that come with the story. I will place them on screen along with a timestamp you can skip to if you would like. This series follows a suicidal teenager, Mika, whose life is saved by an immortal being, Hibino. Once she recovers and wakes up, she sees Hibino and his travel companion, a dying god, Hani, who are on a journey to Yomi, the land of death. They are on this journey in order to pass on. Mika pleads to join them, and after much back and forth, she gets her way. Thus begins their road trip to the land of the dead. They make several stops to pay their respects to gods, sightsee, and converse with people they come across. Their trip is filled with beautiful moments and the delicate reality of mortality. It's a sad and beautiful masterpiece. This is a 10 out of 10. Shonen Note Boy Soprano is by the same mangaka as Hyrath, The End of the Journey. This is a coming-of-age story that follows Yutaka, a soprano singer in junior high who loves to sing. Many of his classmates and teachers take notice of his talent and unintentionally pressure him to use his voice as much as possible. This leads Yutaka to question what he wants to do with his talent who he is creatively, and what his true voice sounds like. The art in this series is incredible. It's able to convey sound and music in an immersive way that I've never seen before in a manga. This gets a 10 out of 10, and yes, all of these titles are 10 out of 10s, I just have fun saying it. So, 10 out of 10. Next up on the list is She Loves to Cook and She Loves to Eat by Sakomi Yusaki. This is a beautiful series about wholesome love and delicious food. Nomoto Yuki lives alone in her apartment and loves to cook. She posts her creations online and gets excited just thinking about what she can cook next. She dreams of cooking large portions, but can't since she has a small appetite and no one to share food with. That is, until she bumps into her neighbor, Kasuga Totoko, who she sees carrying a large large bag of takeout to her apartment. She finds out that Kasuga has an insatiably big appetite, so Nomoto starts dropping off some meals for her when she ends up cooking too much. This meal sharing leads to a friendship where they both visit each other, cook meals together, eat together. It's very precious to witness. Will their friendship become something else? Only time will tell. I'm wholeheartedly invested in this series, and it gets a perfect 10 out of 10 from me. Keeping it on theme with the food plus gay romance genre, What Did You Eat Yesterday? This series follows a gay couple in their 40s who live together. They share meals and talk about their lives, and that's pretty much it. Their relationship is filled with ups and downs, and I've enjoyed seeing them both grow in their relationship together as well as individuals. They aren't perfect, but they do love each other and try their best to learn from their mistakes. I find this slice of life series utterly charming, sweet, delicious, and human. It gets a 10 out of 10. And next on the list is Yokohama Gaidashi Kiko by Hitoshi Ashinano. This is a well-crafted, slice-of-life series that follows the story of an android living in post-apocalyptic Japan. Alpha, our main character, is put in charge of a cafe by her owner. We follow Alpha as she runs through her daily routine of opening up the shop, keeping stock of coffee beans, playing music, conversing with friends, and enjoying the countryside. She is gifted a camera, which she uses to capture her favorite memories and scenic views. She begins to actively take in her environment in an effort not to miss anything worthwhile. The ecosystem is falling apart, but Alpha naturally sees beauty everywhere. I give this a 10 out of 10. Next up on the list is Witch Hat Atelier by Gamome Shirahama. This series immediately entranced me. I vividly remember the first time I opened up the first volume. The artwork transported me to another world right away. This series follows our protagonist Koko who loves magic and wants nothing more but to become a witch. 
when she runs into Kifri, a real-life witch. She can't contain her excitement. An event occurs, which I am omitting to avoid spoilers, and she is invited to become one of Kifri's apprentices, and begins her journey into the world of magic. At the atelier, Coco meets other apprentices with varying levels of skill, and they each specialize in different types of magic. Coco is inspired by her new environment, and is excited to learn magic, but she also feels pressure to learn quickly. This series tackles some emotional and heavy themes, but balances them well with moments of leisure, humor, and beauty. This is a 10 out of 10. This was bound to happen. I knew from the moment I started loving manga, I'd have to read The Crown Jewel One Piece by Ichiro Oda. When I really think about it, I love One Piece for one simple reason. Luffy is so unabashedly himself. He lives in the moment, he doesn't fear what's coming next. He has a goal in mind and he strives towards it unwaveringly. It's easy to look up to Luffy and naturally you want the best for him. You want him to succeed and become the king of the pirates. The journeys that he and his crew go through are entertaining, emotional, and live in my mind rent free. If I'm feeling down, I know that One Piece is there to pick me up and boost my mood. This is clearly a 10 out of 10. And that concludes my best reads of 2023. I read other great titles as well, but I only wanted to focus on those that received a perfect 10 out of 10 from me. All right, I'll see you next year. I hope 2024 is great for both of us, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.